Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be doing something a whole lot different than I normally do. Today I'm going to be unboxing a rock tumbler. I'm also going to be taking you on a little adventure with me. And the reason why I'm doing that is because in my last video, I featured a piece of repurposed sea glass. I turned it into a stained glass window. And from that uh, video, I got a couple of requests to show the rock tumbler. And I've also been bottle digging on my parents' property. I found an old bottle dump there. And while I was pulling out these neat little bottles, which I found quite a few of them. I was also finding broken glass. So while I was piling it up into a garbage pile, I suddenly got the idea I should use it and turn it into sea glass because this kind of glass here is super thick and the colors are so much fun. Like the green, the blue, amber, brown. It's just fantastic glass. I'm so happy to be able to use it instead of throwing it away. So we're going to do a few different things in this video. One is I'm going to show you the rock tumbler. I'm also going to take you to my parents' property because while I was searching for the broken glass, I found a few treasures and I thought it would be fun to kind of leave that in. You're also going to see my dad and now there's some of my viewers are big fans of my dad so I thought I would leave this video in as well even though he's pretty dirty we had earlier that day wrestled with a couple of boulders <laughs> my dad is 87 years old and him and I were out there wrestling these boulders so we both got pretty dirty that day and he had no idea he was going to be on video but now, before we jump into the video, I am aware it's October and some of you are waiting for more Halloween-y type videos. So I'm just showing you that I am working on one. I don't know when it's going to be ready. Maybe four days, maybe three days. I'm not too sure. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you've got your bell notification on and you'll know exactly when I upload the next video. All right, guys, with all that said, let's get started. Guys, we're going to unbox this thing together. This is the National Geographic Rock Tumbler Hobby Edition. I ordered it off Amazon. And to be quite honest, it's an expensive little unit, but I don't regret buying it at all. I did a product research before I settled on this brand. It's a small tumbler, and with the amount of glass that I am tumbling, I wish I would have got a bigger one, but I have no complaints. It's working out for me so far. And thankfully, the rock tumbler doesn't create any heat when it's in use, so you can actually run it for weeks on end with no worries. And the black ring I was just holding up is the extra belt for the motor in case the first one wears out. Oh, they must be in here. I was going to say they're missing the gems or the rocks that I was supposed to get with it. How do you get this thing open? I just got my paint can opener. Maybe that'll help me get in there. Yep. All right. I didn't know how to get this thing off. So I just looked at the book and it looks like you put this little knob thing back on there and then pull up. There we go. All right, so we got our base and we got the tumbler, strainer, power cord, little instructional booklet, all the grits. I think there's four different stages of grit in there. And then some jewelry making pieces and our little rocks here, amethyst, tiger's eye. Inside the book, you find all the names for these. And then I ended up with some broken bits here. But overall, a nice little selection. And now we're off to collect the broken glass that I left behind on my last bottle dig. And I'm on my parents' property. And this is my dad's lumber shed. And there's my rake, shovel, and bucket waiting for me as usual. So we'll pick those up. And then we'll head over here. And you'll start seeing broken glass already. And that's what I'm coming for today. There's a green piece right there. This would make excellent glass in the tumbler. So thick this here really thick bottom of the pop bottle of course it's always important to wear gloves when you're digging for broken glass working along the surface like this and picking up bigger pieces was safe enough it was also easier for me to work with my bare hands to show you things on the screen but i saw something and i thought i better go get my camera there it is there it is i had no idea what this was and i was pretty excited about it so i went looking for my dad so we could open it up together I ended up looking for him for about 10 minutes, and it turns out he was looking for me. I found something. I fixed you up with a new... Holy Christ. <laughs> it opens up. I haven't opened it yet. I was waiting for you. Oh! Oh, Peter. I didn't know it would open that easy. I was just bringing to show you. Yeah. Well, that clasp works good for being in the ground so long. Oh, absolutely. Wow, that's quite amazing, yeah. actually. Uh, I fixed you up with a, a bit of rake digging around. I found a broke, broken handle rake. Yeah. The handle was gone. Uh-huh. I happened to have a nice handle for it. Oh. I put it together. Did you? Is it over there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you brought me a rake and I was gone. Yeah. I was looking uh, for you and you were looking I, for me. I was looking all <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? Uh, maybe it was yesterday. <laughs> it was 
I went all over. I went to the house to went all your shops, all three of them. <laughs> Dad, are you in here? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's nice, Dad. Oh, that's going to be so much nicer. Tangs are there. Wow, look at the difference between that one. Oh, and I know. Really. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it was working. Yeah, it was. But that mm -hmm. that can will do a better job. Thanks, Dad. Oh, what's that? I think it's a button. So it turns out to be quite the spectacular little button. It's from 1929. It's a metal button. In the center there is a Hessian, I think that's how you pronounce it, a Hessian eagle, meaning it's a soldier's button. And written around the edge is in Latin, translated to English is God is our hope. I don't know if those are actual diamonds, but they look pretty in there. I did manage to get a lot of the rust off, but a lot of it remains, as you can see. What was really fascinating was this clasp. It's working so well after all those years. And I don't know the exact date of it, but when I was cleaning it, I noticed on the inside, this looks like it used to be a speaker, and I thought, no, that can't be. But I looked it up, musical compacts, and they were a thing in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Even into the 70s, they would have little makeup compacts and there would be a little wind-up here. There's a hole there that was probably for the wind-up. It had some sort of music playing. But all in all, it held up well. Yes, let me know in the comments what you think. Did you have one? Did your mother have one? I'd love to know. I actually managed to pull out a few other things um, out of that same spot. And I had found one like this a couple weeks ago in my previous bottle dig. And I threw it behind me, didn't even think twice. But now I'm thinking, wow, that would make a great pedestal for the gnome home for something. So I'll just take the prong out of there. So that's the prong that would have went in the wall. It's missing one. But I'll take that out. But there'll be some sort of fancy pedestal for the gnomes. All right, enough of that. Let's get on with those bottles. I'm going to go and wash all of this up. We'll come back and I'll show you how I break it down. All right, I got all the pieces cleaned. Now, I don't know if that's a necessary step to clean them all, but some of them were really caked with dirt, so I just thought better to get rid of it all. Now I'm going to break all the pieces down using my tile cutter, and I'm gonna go right on that very edge. You can use a hammer to break the glass, but I found doing it that way, you get a lot of powder and a lot of waste, and there's no control over the size of pieces that you get. When you use the tile cutters, you have all the control, and once you get going, it goes fairly fast. Some of these bottoms have really neat things written on the bottom, like this one here. It says Canada Dry Ginger Ale, and then it's got 1930, and it's got their logo there. And I actually cut away the side. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I might turn it into a Nom Home window. We'll see. So if you had found the same thing and you wanted to save it, you just take your tile cutters and you go on the very edge and just cut around it. So I just weighed this for fun and there's four pounds of glass in there and all that glass is really old, dates from 1920 to 1960. So I feel pretty happy about that. I get to turn it into something beautiful. So I have some sand from the beach here. I'm not an expert at this, I'm just learning myself and you can find tutorials on how to tumble things online, of course. But I'm gonna use step one and this only goes in for three days. Rocks are a totally different animal and you have to do it in stages. So glass is just one stage. Never measured out the amount that I put in, and it probably tells you what to put in, but I just go in about a little bit of a handful there. Now, this stuff is rather expensive, and I'm already running out. Look how shiny it is. Looks like crystals. I'm going to throw that in there. And with that and my sand. So you're only supposed to go about three quarters full, and then you take your water and you fill it so it just about covers. I think that looks good. Maybe I'll throw a little bit more sand in there. Just for giggles. <laughs> this is the sealer part that goes in first. Okay, and then you take this off and the other part goes on. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that's nice and tight. And then we're going to stick it on the template. And that just sits right on top like that. And then this numbers here, one through seven, is the number of days. I'm going to choose three. One, two, and three.
So now we're going to take this off. And it's actually been four days because yesterday I was super busy and I couldn't get to it. Uh, you can leave this in. I'll show you the difference between three and four days because I have some that I've only done three days. And when I get this open, I'm going to be pouring it into the strainer. I'll take it outside and hose it because this stuff in here we can't put in our drains. The grit that we use solidifies like cement and it will clog the drain. And that's what it's supposed to look like. It's got a good foam on there. All right, I'm going to take it outside and I'll be right back. This is the pile that I just pulled out of the tumbler today. This was in the thing for four days. There's the batch I did previously. It was a three-day tumble. And then this here is actual sea glass that my kids and I found this year. And most of the pieces were this big. We found quite a few of these pieces. I was so excited to throw them in the tumbler and just finish off what the sea started. All those marks and stuff, those are authentic sea marks. A little bit different than just tumbling regular old bottles. You'll find that sea glass is a little bit more beat up. Uh, difference between the third, three day and the four day isn't much, if there's any at all. So this is the four day and this is the three day. And the three day didn't really have any sand in it. I did throw in a couple pebbles to see if it would help beat it up a little bit, but mm, I don't think it really did anything. So if you have any tips about beating up the glass a little bit more, leave them in the comments. So I'll show you the untumbled versus the tumbled. Let's turn this on so you can hear how loud it is. And it's honestly not that terrible. It's just that it's sitting in my craft room and I work in here every single day and I don't want to have to turn this off just because I'm in here. So what I did was make it a box to muffle the sound, an insulated box. And I did it in two stages because I, I honestly didn't plan it out. And the first box was great. Then I added on to it. So I'm going to turn this on. You can hear how loud it is and then you'll hear it with the box on top. two layers of cardboard and it's not actually a box it's just cardboard that I taped and glued together it's just something that I custom made to fit around this thing here so the inside is insulated with this packing material recently I had something fragile shipped to me and they use this inside the box so I saved it and I glued and taped it on the inside and then this handle is just cardboard and to keep it from ever coming off of there I use these uh, paper binder things just push them through the top Right, so this is a couple days later and I've added on to the box. I put another layer of cardboard on the inside just to make it even a little quieter. I was just looking this machine over and I noticed there's a little vent back here and I've been running this machine for a couple of weeks pretty much with no break in between. I've done about four or five batches of that glass and I haven't felt any heat coming out of there or any issues at all with the box on top. This box has been sitting on top of this machine while it's been in use and I've had no issues but I'm telling you this because there is a vent back here and so if you decide to make a box like this make sure you're clearing that vent give it at least that much space all the way around see how much space I have on each side and then on this side and then you can see it's pretty deep compared to this here so I got quite a bit of height clearing the top so just keep all those things in mind you want to make sure you're clearing this and you're not obstructing anything on your machine and I don't want to be held responsible for anyone doing the same thing I bought a machine I found it too loud so I made it a box but that's just for me so what I'm doing now is adding the masking tape around the edge, and I just want to connect the inside wall to the main wall. You can see how it bounces there. I'm not worried about the inside because, like I said, I have those um, pins in there holding everything together. And when I'm done this part, I'm going to add some more book paper from here around the inside just to make sure that masking tape stays in place. So I'm just tearing up some old book pages. This book is so old that the this is actually stacked paper and I can just easily tear it. See how old that is? And I have some white glue, white PVA glue, a little bit of water in there to make it easier for brushing on. And I'll just brush it in there and on the edge and down here. So I'm just gonna lay that there over the wet glue and into the inside. And then I brush the glue over top that paper. So you can see I ended up covering up the entire inside. I wasn't planning on that, but I thought might as well. I had the book pages and the glue out, so I just kept going. 
And the trick to this is to make sure that there's no dry paper on top of dry paper. So you brush the glue on, put your paper down, brush the glue over top, and then you keep going until all the cardboard is covered. And the other trick is make sure that you tear all four sides of the paper. Old book pages tear very easily. Newer book pages need a little help. Sometimes a ruler helps a lot. So to make sure that your box sits flat on the table or on the floor, make sure to notch out a little space for the cord to sit over top. So I have two layers of cardboard, a layer of that insulation, and then another layer of cardboard. So let's see how quiet it is now. I'll turn this back on. Always exciting to find the blue pieces. These ones are harder to come by. <gasps> oh, the lock. <laughs> so I brought it to my dad's shop and he got the rust off there. It says Squire. Some sort of tag. I think it says British Columbia at the bottom. 1920? Oh my gosh, or 1930. I gotta bring this to the house. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. So it turns out to be a taxi license for 1950. So that's pretty cool. Here's another little one. Another little amber glass. Oh! <gasps> oh! It's embossed on the side. Whitehall. That's exciting. I'll put it with my other treasures. <laughs>